And welcome to your source for optimism, resilience, and hope. I'm Dr. Terry Paulson, your host for another five-minute roller coaster ride to understanding how you can claim your own optimism advantage. Renowned psychiatrist Eric Byrne was once asked how he would define a healthy person. He replied, healthy people go yes, no, and whoopee. Unhealthy people go yes, but, no, but, and no whoopee. That's a great definition. Mark Twain spoke of humor's value. Humor is the great thing, the saving thing. The minute it crops up, all our hardnesses yield, all our irritations and resentments split away, and a sunny spirit takes their place. Victor Frankl, Holocaust survivor and author of Man's Search for Meaning, called laughter the currency of hope. He wrote, An outsider may be astonished to hear that one could find a sense of humor in a concentration camp. Humor was another of the soul's weapons in the fight for self-preservation. It can afford an aloofness and an ability to rise above any situation, even if only for a few seconds. Fellow inmates survive daily by inventing one amusing story to tell others. You see, humor helps everything. Unfortunately, many have forgotten the value of humor in making us more resilient in this age of change and uncertainty. Too many walk around looking like they're in pain. You know the ones. Instead of leaving their cars in park, they leave their faces in park. Okay, I realize not all humor works. Some humor creates laughter at the expense of others. Leave sarcasm and jokes that make fun of others out of your humor repertoire. Lawrence Peter said it best. Realize that a sense of humor is deeper than laughter and more satisfying than comedy and delivers more rewards than merely being entertaining. A sense of humor sees the fun in everyday experiences. It is more important to have fun than it is to be funny. Leave room for laughter every day. The safest target for your humor will always be yourself. Learn to laugh at your errors, and the world will laugh with you, not at you. Only the self-confident can admit their mistakes. Laughing at your own errors will help you let go of mistakes and bounce back. We all like to be with people who are comfortable in their own skin, warts, receding hairlines, and all. So take your work and life seriously, but yourself and your problems a bit more lightly. Benjamin Franklin knew the value of humorous perspective when he observed Parsons even in his prosperity always fretting, pots in the midst of his poverty ever laughing. It seems then that happiness in this life rather depends on internals than externals. Laughter is one of the natural tranquilizers of life. Laughter provides that inner upper, an emotional massage that ushers in a new perspective for our irritations and disappointments. After all, why cry when you can laugh? Laughter is also contagious, and so is cynicism. Which would you prefer to give to others? You know the answer. People love to be around people who bring them joy. Give the gift of humor by using a few one-liners that invite a humorous perspective. Are we having fun yet? Some days you're the bug, some days the windshield. Even this life is a test. It is only a test. If it had been a real life, I would have been given instructions on where to go and what to do. Stretch your humor muscles daily. Start by recognizing what makes you laugh and put more of it in your life. Keep copies of your favorite comedies and watch them when you need a lift. Keep a photo album of your favorite comics. Keep one at the office and one at home. Don't send junk mail to people. Send joke mail that will be read. Try sharing humorous incidents instead of negative gossip when you talk to coworkers and staff. Take time to initiate and talk humor over dinner at home. The more you look for humor, the more you'll find it. Always be ready to say, now that's funny. Many of your best memories are laced with laughter, so promise to have more fun in your life. Keep an air of playfulness. Take time to laugh and smile daily. A biblical insight in the book of Proverbs says it all. He that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. After all, when God created Adam and Eve and they ate that apple, he took back the apartment with a view, gave them a baby, and made them work. Then to keep the whole thing from falling apart, he invented humor as a ready sidekick to help them survive. Let me close with a wise motto from Russ Walden, a successful company president. If you aren't having fun in your work, fix the problem before it becomes serious. Ask for help if you need it. And if you can't fix it and won't ask for help, please go away before you spoil the fun for the rest of us. That's worth remembering as we journey through this uncertain and changing time. Now, let there be laughter and let it start with you. Until next time, this is Dr. Terry Paulson with www.terrypaulson.com. Thanks for watching.